All right, I think we can all agree that there can be few things in life as frustrating as trying to get a piece of material to run true in your machine. Now, if you've watched some of my other videos, you know that I preach uh, doing two parts of the diameter or a diameter and a face as far as getting a, a squareness and then get the concentricity to run in. But let's take a look at how this part is running and you can tell me if this is going to be easy to dial this error out or not. There's a very simple trick that I'm about to show you that will take a lot of aggravation out of your life. So let's check it out. We're going to check this part in two different locations. Take a look at the indicator and let's watch what the run out is. It's about 4 thou, right? Ideal. Let's move over. Four thou. This is going to be absolutely ideal to knock this error out. I'm going to go back to the chuck. Since we know it's four and four, it's got to be true, right? <laughs> you would think. So let's see if we can give this a quick tweak. Get it closer. All right, couple of tenths. Not bad. Let's move this over to the zero so it's a little bit more visible. All right, we're bouncing about two tenths ish on either side of that zero. So most of you guys would say that's fine. Let's move out to the other end that was also four thou out and see what just happened. Okay, well, that's terrific. This end didn't move at all. How is that possible? That is possible because the part was in there straight, but the high spot on this end was not the high spot on this end. So when you check your part in two different locations and you find your high spot, you see the needle coming around the zero, that's about plus two and a half right there. Put a dot on it, a line, whatever but reference that as your high spot because if that line or that dot is not in line with the needle when you find your high spot on this side well then you know you've got a problem so there you go your indicator is now lying to you it's lied to you twice it told you that the bar was straight because you had common errors on both of your location points and now it's telling you that it's running true because it's zero when in fact it's not the only way to get that out of there, if you have true and not, is to physically bang this part until it runs true. As you move the outbound side, double check the inboard side. All right. As the part starts to shift, the concentricity at the jaw is going to change as well. This is a back and forth kind of issue here. Dial out any kind of error close to the jaw so you know that the starting point is legit. And then double check the outbound side again. Back and forth. Alright, so we have, and this is good, we have about a thou and a half worth of run out here. And we have about a thou and a half worth of run out here. Let's test that theory, see what happens. High spot, right there. I think we can agree on that. Let's move the indicator to the outside of the part. There you go. There's the mark that we just put on there. We are at the high point on the indicator. Just for yucks, I'm going to check the middle, which is still constant. And I think if we can get that thou and a half out of this part, which shouldn't be a problem with this chuck. All 
A uh, couple of tenths. I'll take it. Back to the front. That's uh, about six tenths. This side. I'm going to write off the couple of tenths worth of error exhibited here by a bend in the raw stock since I have a good reading in the center and a good reading on the outside. That's telling me that there's a little bit of a bow to this part and that you're not going to get it out. But you can see, be careful, when you have an indicator running one consistent error and another consistent error that are equal, make sure the high spots of each error is the same. Good tip to know. Okay guys, for everybody that hung in for that particular indicator demonstration, thank you very much. And if you weren't quite sure about the high spots, what I was talking about, it's just like journals on a crank. While one side is high, the other side is low, and vice versa. And you may have the same error, and as you adjust one, the other one is just going to get worse because the error between the two sides will always be what it was originally. Now that's kind of hard to grasp, but this makes a whole lot of sense. You want to get it to run this way, and then you can dial the concentricity out. And second of all, I know a lot of you guys are probably scrambling for your keyboards to leave the comment about beating on something when there's an indicator on it. Two schools of thought on that. You don't ever want to bang on material and allow the shock from that material to translate through your indicator. It's just a sensitive piece of equipment and you really don't want to do that. So if you watch the video or replay it, you'll see that when I am tapping on that particular piece of material, I am applying a substantial amount of pressure to the top to act as a dampener and to keep that material from doing the diving board or springboard thing and sending shock back through my indicator. You can usually tell if you've forgot to do that when you tap your part, all of a sudden your indicator needle is in a different location or it's maxed out because you just moved everything. So a little bit of pressure on the top, gentle hits. If you can avoid banging on anything with an indicator on it, fine. Move the indicator off, tap it, move it back on. It only takes a second. No big deal. So I was applying pressure to it to relieve the springboard diving board effect for anybody that didn't pick up on that. Anyway, get your parts to run straight. Watch that indicator. It tells you a lot of good information if you know what to look for. Joe Pye, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. I'm out.